What's up, everybody? Let's we are game. now with the mailman Hell from yeah. 707, and you're watching Kinetic Outcome. Hey, man, my nigga. <laughs> and his name's Frank, by the way. Frank, yeah. So, um, Frank, uh, just uh, an introduction of yourself. I guess a little, like, story run of your journey throughout music. How did you get into it today? Um, well, I'm from Colombia. I'm 21. Uh, I've been rapping for a while now. I've been in Hong Kong for five years. So my mom, my dad, they've been like selling CDs since I was like a, like a little kid, just a toddler and shit. So um, they always introduced me to like hip hop and reggae and all these like different styles. So like I grew up on that musical type of thing. And then slowly, slowly I started getting into hip hop because of like the situation that I was in at the moment. Uh, later on after that, when I came to Hong Kong, that's when I really started to like dig into the the writing and the, you know, really, really put my time into it. So it, it really, the, like, the journey really, really started when I came to Hong Kong, like about five years now. Yeah. Cool. What are the rewards and also, like, the challenges that you go through I, since uh, you started five years ago? I think one of the challenges was, like, uh, learning how to speak English. Because, you know, um, if I rap in Spanish, not everybody can really understand. When I came here, that was really a big problem because I couldn't speak Cantonese, nor really could speak much English. So it was really hard for me to like uh, get uh, to that point, you know what I'm saying? Where I could really speed a line or like where I could write uh, a full verse. But uh, I think what is rewarding of the, of the whole, the whole staying up late and working on many things is that later on somebody will like listen to it and really, like, really vibe on it, you know, like when you're on the stage. And people are like, you know, really jump into your shit. You feel like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Like, it paid off, like, okay. So yeah, I'm like slowly, slowly getting there to that, that point of like reaching my satisfaction, you know? Yeah. Dope. What and how do you feel about Hong Kong's approach to the culture? And that's both on English and Cantonese, Cantonese. side. Yeah. Well, I tell you, man, I feel like uh, I cannot really speak much on the Cantonese side. Because, you know, as I tell you, I cannot really speak it. So I'm really listen to it, but I have many friends that like you know rap in the Cantonese way and shit, and I feel like they really got flow, like they really got it going on. They really starting to like um, develop different flows and go here and go there. Like you see some like really dope rappers like Hey Yo and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Make you feel like okay, they really want to get into it. You know what I mean? In the English side, you got people like like Chris and Wes and like you guys. You know, like, the mama told me Chris and Wes now like bring like. Uh, new talent you know what i mean to like let it grow more so like it's like you guys are working together to just just let the way happen you know it's slowly slowly getting there but like for now i feel like hong kong has still got much to like learn when it comes to hip-hop you know like we like we just coming up like and i feel like we're not really seeing what we have to see you know what i mean so yeah i feel like hong kong hong kong hip-hop can really develop to a way much bigger level in just next year you know what I mean? Because like, you got people like now, for example, Jassy, Jab Boy, you know, with that heat that make you feel like, ooh, you know? So yeah, I feel like we can really develop to a higher level just like next year. Cool. What would you, if you have anything, would suggest or address to everyone else who are into the culture? Like, be open, because um, th these are different point of views. I got, I'll tell you. I got Tomiyama's view and everybody else that we talked to earlier. I don't know. I probably would say like uh, just be real, factual, real like facts. I would say it's fine. Don't don't just look at the the culture as it is right now. Like I would suggest you to like look at it as it will be later. You know, because like right now, if any rapper that want to come in will just look at the at the culture and feel like he will feel like he's motivated. You know, because right now we're not really at that point. But like if you look at what would it be later, the motivation will really grow daily. You know what I mean? Because daily is growing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I feel like to any like rapper or any new person that wanna get into the culture or anybody who's trying to understand the culture, you gotta look at it not as in right now, but as in what would it be in a few more years. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's I agree with that. View. Yeah. Cool. And um, for you, like what kind of sound or genre should people expect from you? From me, nah. or like, what's your main style? I'll or tell are you, you flexible? Like, you can expect some uh, some really uh, deep past memories, but like style. When it comes to style, personally, I wouldn't I wouldn't tell you because I feel like anything can be anything. You know, I can. It can be today. It can be some like dark hip hop, or it can be some trap, or it can be 
you know, some like a really groovy, jazzy type of thing. So it can be anything, but just expect to hear the real shit. You know what I'm saying? That's all you can expect from me. Yeah. All right. And yeah, who do you look up to most? Could be anyone. Like I said, as in Hong Kong, right? I'll in tell Hong you. Kong and global. I will, I will, I will yeah. say in Hong Kong, I will, I will look up to like niggas like um, now. Uh, let's see. Hey yo, uh, Jab Boy. I don't know. I feel like uh, they really got some, you know, like uh, you guys, like you and Mojito. It's people that have something to say. People that have flows that can add something to the match, you know, like they step in the stage and shit changes. You know what I mean? So I look up to like these type of niggas, like niggas like Nal and, and Jesse. These are the people that I look up to at the moment. I don't really, you know, Kendrick and all these other people, yeah, they're iconic and everything, but it's just, I feel like it's superficial for me, you know? I'm in Hong Kong and I look up to the people that are around me. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's me. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah? And what about like um, going through the process of, uh, like I say this a lot, I really don't care what others think, but if it's good criticism, great. Of course. But for you, like going through that process of a lot of critics and negative comments or people you might expect that would support you, but maybe not, okay. or maybe your family, I'm not sure about that. If your family supports you, great. But throughout that process, like how are you dealing with it or have you dealt with it? Uh, well, I learned to like just take it in. You know, because mm -hmm. criticism is nothing but good. You know what I mean? Any criticism is good criticism. So it can be from your family, it can be from your friends, it can be from a, just a random stranger. But if that person tells you something, it's because maybe he sees what you don't see. You know what I mean? And you cannot just close your mind to it. Like you cannot say, okay, that's not, that's not true. No, you gotta open your mind and just see it as, okay, let me take it in and let's see what can I work with it, right? Yeah, that's that's what I feel at that point. So those those dumb comments don't affect you. Right? Like the dumb stuff. No, not really, not really. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, like uh, your plans for, if you have any plans for 2018, like maybe an EP, oh, I'm planning, or I'm are planning you taking to... your time to train more? Like yeah, lyrically, like definitely. I'm okay. planning to train, and we, with 7 on 7, we're planning to release an, uh, a mixtape, like around February, you know, working on that with Nick Cage and everything, seeing well, how can we push these things out and everything like that. But um, yeah, actually, there's a sneak peek that was supposed to be out. But okay, I'm, I'm gonna leave it out like that. Well, this might be out around February or March. Okay, so cool then. Just send, send me the link by that All time. All right. Yeah, so that's what's coming up, like the, the mixtape on February and uh, a lot more like my personal mixtape. Also like in like in the mid of the year, it will be coming that's out. That's a like, little later? A little bit later, yeah, a little okay. later. Cool, man. Well, anything else you may want to discuss or? Do you mind if I give a few shout outs? Yeah, sure. Hey, man. Shout out Uncle Nick. Shout out 7 on 7. Shout out to my mama, my little brother. <laughs> shout out to my girlfriend. And shout out to all rappers, man. I love y'all. I'm the low, though. Ladies and gentlemen, mailman, 7 on 7, a.k.a. Frank. You are watching Kinetic Outcome. See y'all.